You're calling, take thy cross and follow me. It's inescapable. Sooner or later, we all pass this way. Some go before they can think about it. Others will have time. Time to contemplate unresolved issues. Time to prepare for the inevitable. Well, then I just have to accept the fact that that's part of, part of getting old. That was a massive tumor. I don't want to embarrass the doctor now what I say right now, but I'll tell you what he said first. I said, what do you mean massive? That's pretty big. And Because here I am thinking it's down to almost nothing. I said, you mean like an apple? Like, I'm hoping for a grape, I guess. <laughs> an apple, a grapefruit? He says, no, like a basketball. I said, wait a minute, doc. I'm only this wide. How to possibly could have, and I'm not sure I was that humorous then. I was a little scared, of course, but I was trying to make it humorous because somehow that helps me sometimes. And you know, uh, I told you about my job, how I came back to work after I've worked 17 years and I came back with cancer. They just didn't want me anymore. They sent me out after nine days. The instinct to survive may delay our demise for days and sometimes years. Unexplainable miracle claims have been known to obliterate disease. Disease, age, and destiny, however, eventually take their toll on the body and sometimes the human spirit. I used to go to some of the theaters. I can't, can't even drive anymore. It's a good thing I had my good times then because... Uh, this, this, this is rough. So rough that often very special people are called upon to guide the weary through this valley of pain and uncertainty. My role is, is simply to be able to hear a person's story, to be able to help them reflect on the value of what their, what their life has been, things that they look back on their life and regret, it's sort of issues that are, confront most people. And it's an opportunity for people to really sort of kind of rephrase their thinking, have an opportunity to really maybe be able to say their thank yous and to acknowledge their worth. All of those issues that are really so, so, so crucial in a person's life. Mary Carney is part of the home care pastoral staff of Connecticut Hospice in Branford, a facility devoted to making what may be the final days meaningful. Reverend Charles Woody is head guardian angel. Hey, Mr. Grant, how's it going today? Right now, I'm having a much better day. Much better day. Much, much better. I love uh, talking with the patients, sharing with the patients, singing to the patients, uh, communing the patients, uh, doing the, the things of, of, of ministry with them. Um, I understand that our, our relationship and our courtship sometimes is brief, uh, but I also understand that so much can happen in such a short period of time because sometimes people come to the end of life, they're angry, uh, they're mad at God, and they need someone to kind of help them to redirect uh, their anger, their emotion, because in heaven there is no place for anger. At Yale New Haven Hospital, Father Jeff Smith is one of 14 chaplains. All of them must take time to hear the plight of their clients. Mr. Randy, Father Smith. And provide comforting pearls of wisdom to help bolster tired spirits. Good morning. Good morning, Father. We found that we had a few people who would stop by, regardless of religion, and just be there so that you could talk to someone. It was always, you know, let's just hold hands. And it just gave you a different confidence that things were really going to be OK and somebody was up there listening to you. Probably the thing you want least is to do it alone. Um, so they need people to do that. Occasionally, as a clergyman, you're called into a room where you're it. You're not just the clergyman. You're the family. You're, you know, the support group. So Peter, how are you and God doing today? We're doing fine. I'm still here. Sometimes you'll come in and you'll find people who have achieved equanimity. I mean, they're at peace with it. It's been a very long struggle. They've come to terms with their life. They feel a sense of closure. Um, they feel the lack of regrets. William Grant, a former long-distance runner, is closing in on four score years. 
Chaplains say the and desire to reach such milestones knows. is often Very enough to well. fuel a second wind. Sometimes it's the belief in something greater that supplies the stamina and comfort. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Father, we give you thanks and praise for this, your servant William. We ask you, Lord God, to just touch him from the top of his head to the very sole of his feet. Bless him within as well as without. We ask you, Lord God, to just pour out your cup of blessings, of healing, of encouragement, of courage, of power, of perseverance for all that is before us. And we will be so careful to give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory. For this we ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm not even sure Ed Generali is a believer. Know, but, uh, the Holy Cross High School basketball water, coach you know, says he's lived with an angel, his wife Maggie, a beloved Waterbury principal. At one of her husband's basketball games, Maggie suffered an aneurysm. During her stay at Yale New Haven Hospital, Generali used whatever religious ammunition he had to try and save his wife. One of the chaplains, Barbara, came up that night. It was a Friday night, and you know, I was, you know, too coherent, I guess, at the time. And I said, you know, sister, you know, sister, and I and I thought she was a nun, you know. <laughs> I mean, see the cross, and you know, and I'm not even sure what denomination, you know. But uh, I said, could you use this holy water? You know, it's from Lords. You know, maybe this will have some, some powers, as we say, our prayers. And uh, and so, you know, she. Sure, I, I love to use this holy water, you know, and uh, so we did, you know, we said our prayers and Barbara pre uh, blessed Maggie and um, sure enough, the next morning we came back and we had, we had grieved all night because we thought that was it. And the next morning we came back and Maggie was still there and then I said, oh, you know, we'll, we'll keep going. And so we called uh, Barbara the miracle worker for, uh, you know, <laughs> the next couple of weeks because she kept her going a little bit longer. Despite the prayers of an entire community, Maggie never came out of the coma and passed away two weeks after being struck down. The last couple of days, we would have two or three chaplains, you know, in the room because they knew that, you know, probably I needed it, you know, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm convinced my wife is uh, an angel. She was an angel when she was here on earth, you know, and I know she's, she's there now, so I don't know if she needed the prayer so much, you know, as I did and, and my children did. Family memories are called upon as patients cope with what may turn out to be the final chapter of life. It's a balancing act. Patients are not ready to give up the ghost, but must be prepared for the sake of their loved ones. Sandra Monteperto now sees life as a garden of blessings, each one to be appreciated. Being there, it means a lot. I don't, uh, I don't distrust when I'm alone. I don't say, oh, gee, I'm so lonely, what's happening here or there? But I do feel like warmth and, and kindness and goodness comes in when the door opens up. I do feel, I feel like from the people, you know, laugh, the people smuggle me in potato chips here at night because they know I'm an addict. <laughs> I feel the same thing with them. Yeah, love comes in many forms. It comes in many forms. Like Sandra, Jack doesn't fear the darkness, believing instead light will guide him. Death is not scaring me right now because the Holy Spirit is right next to where death is sitting in me right now. And I know the Holy Spirit is in control of that, and he can do it. I mean, there will be a first death, but that will be the end of it, and that I can accept. Honorado Brandy has been given a reprieve by way of a heart transplant, and he's been given a lot of time to think about it. Being in this room for so many hours, particularly at night, you have a chance to recount all the things that happened in your life. Excuse me. Oh, that's okay. Oh, that's okay. It's all right. And I realize all the things that he has done for me. And that has to be out of love. And that's why I love him in return. So being clear with that uh, made things a lot easier going forward. Uh, it's, it's not a blind faith. It's a faith in God. And he just carries me through day after day. That's a good feeling. And I certainly thank you for stopping by to cover me. The miracle of technology is keeping Peter Spazano alive as he waits for his heart transplant. 
Chaplain Midge Colombo has been there all along for Peter, as have others of all faiths and denominations. People who Peter says were literally a godsend. I met a man in here who had a heart transplant about a year and a half ago, and he came in one night about a week ago, and uh, basically said, "Don't I know you?" And I said, "Well, not really. I'm gonna. I'm waiting for a heart." And he said, "Well, guess what? God must have sent me here because I just had one done." That, that just saying that made everything change. I mean, because you know everything's going to go okay, but uh, when you find somebody who has it, who's had it done and you're speaking to them, it's a big difference. With Peter, because that one thing I see my role different. Did. My role is to be able to be there with him, to be faithful to him, and to listen to his stories, to listen to his stories about his business and his family, to hear his life commandments, those things that he holds dear, that make him who he is, and to honor that. The patients uh, are looking for consolation. They're looking for someone to talk to. Uh, they're looking for someone to say that uh, because all of these things that I used to do, I could walk, I could drive, I, all the things that they're losing, that they are grieving over, that it's going to be okay, that there's, there is going to be a, a, a better day after all of my pain and suffering is over, that there's going to be a better day. Certainly, pastoral care can be draining for the spirit-filled agents of faith. There is another side, however, a chance to see people at their most courageous, people full of hope, patients enthusiastic about love and making it all right with family and friends. My work is special because it allows me to connect with people in very intimate moments and to be, where, to be with them and share with them in that moment. It's a spirit of being that happens to be created in that moment and they're holy, and they're sacred, and they're special. Um, and I, it's, it's an honor for me to be with people um, at, at those moments. And, and they're all special. Each, each person, I think you said earlier, they have their own unique stories and their own unique um, suffering that they bring and that they want to begin to make meaning of and to find out what the meaning is for them in their life. And it's very dear to, be, dear to me to be able to help them in that wrestling and that figuring out process. You've done quite a bit in your life, have you? I tried. Yeah. Where he leads me I'll go with him, with him, all the, the way. I pray that you go with him all the way this day. All right. Well, God bless you, and we'll be back to see you again soon, okay? All right. God bless.